tonight's talk would then be to really explain the purpose of forgiveness, both on a seemingly separate self benefit and the benefit of the collective. So we're taught by our grandparents, and I don't know if it's the same in other languages, but certainly in English, I was raised English, so it says um, forgive, to forgive is to forget. Okay. And the other wonderful line was forgiving and receiving are one and the same. And to me, the two play so hand in hand and make such a strong argument for forgiveness that it could never be ignored. And it works like this, and it's actually so simple to understand. So ultimately, what forgiveness does is it frees you up from holding yourself bonded to whatever you need to forgive. So whatever's been done to you, whatever sin's been committed to you, what you believe is a sin's been committed to you, any grievance that you still hold, any wrongdoing that's been done to you, any time you've been a victim of someone else in some way, whether it be physical, emotional, um, mental, you know, physiologically, whatever the case may be, whenever you've been victim to someone else's hurt and you felt hurt because you believed you're separate from that person, forgiveness allows you to be free. Why? When you let that, that episode that, that keeps you in bondage, when you let that go, you free yourself up. If you truly forgive, you'll forget about it. And therefore, it won't have to repeat itself via the actions of what seems to be another. Because there seems to be other people, and we happen to have the same repeat hurtful, hurtful experience over and over again. So forgiveness frees us up to let go. And once, once that experience of hurt towards us is gone out of our awareness, we forget the experience. So true forgiveness brings us to forget the hurt done to us. How do you know you're forgiven? When it no longer comes up, you no longer talk about it. And should someone raise it in the future and say, well, you know, remember that happened to you. How do you feel? Have you over it? And you go, oh, goodness, I've already forgotten about it. When you've really forgotten about it, it means that you have practiced and achieved true forgiveness. It's gone. So to forgive is to forget. So forgiveness sets you free. In the same way, you know, forgiving and receiving are one and the same things. So when you give forgiveness, when you forgive, when you, you're giving forgiveness, first of all, you set the other person free too from the bondage of feeling guilt over having seen to, appear to have harmed you. So you free them up. In freeing them up, you freed yourself up. So what happens? As you've given forgiveness, you receive the freedom of the bondage. So, so in essence, forgiving, forgiving or forgiving, as in one word, you split it up and you can play in the words, Forgiving and receiving are the one and the same thing. And forgiving and receiving are one and the same thing. So I like to play on the words. So you could split the word up for and give or one word forgive. So forgiving and receiving are one and the same thing. So when you give to another out of, could it be, it could be a charity or you help another. Um, as the Bible teaches us, if, if a man asks you to walk up one mile, well then walk two miles. Why? Because you can. If he asks you, you know, for charity, go as far as you can. And so when you give with complete love, unconditional love, and you give from the very core of the self, from the very core of your heart to others, because you know they're a part of the divine collective, all sons and daughters of the one living God, and you see the face of Christ in them. So you, you give as you would if Jesus stood in front of you. If Jesus asked any of us for anything, we would give it to him but we're a little less reluctant to give in the same way um, to another brother. And, and when we give, we need to give unconditionally, with no attachment. Um, and, and, and 
as we give, we know we're giving to the one self, to the Christ at over self, to the one holy son of God, which is us collectively in Christ. Now imagine someone, you know, that needed something and you were to give them something that you really held on to that was dear to you. And you gave it to them because you really truly cared about them. And they were to give it on to someone else. Would it anger you? Because if you've given with a condition, then you haven't truly given. If you give with resentment, so if you get to the street corner and there's the beggar and you can see and you feel guilty because you've got and he hasn't and you give him, you know, a dollar bill and you go, oh, bugger, I wish they weren't here. Well, then you haven't given anything. Perhaps the beggar benefits from it, but you certainly don't. When you give, give with an open heart. Give without any conditions. Give because you want to give. Give because it gives you joy. Because the minute you give from a place of love, unconditional love, and a place from joy, because you have, you can only give something you have. So the gratitude for having already is incredible power within you. So if you give with total unconditional love, what do you receive in the very least? Because never give to receive, but what do you receive in the very least? You receive the joy, the joyous moment of being able to have given. And that in itself is beautiful because when you feel joy, you resonate in the vibration of joy and law of attraction is always at play. So when you give and you feel joyous, what do you attract to you? The experience of more joy, the more experiences for you to feel joy. So giving truly is receiving. Yet if you're giving to receive, well, then you've given with a condition attached. It's the same thing as asking God for something. When you ask God with a condition, God, if you give me that, I will do this, then you're not asking unconditionally. And of course, then because you're asking without, with conditions, you've imposed conditions upon yourself. And if you're not able to uphold those conditions with perfect peace, and with perfect gratitude, what happens? It binds you to the very guilt that has kept you bound up until that moment. So if there's something to, to really work on in this lifetime of ours is to really focus on forgiveness because it sets us free, it sets the other person free, it sets the collective sonship free. When we free, we remember the self which abides as the Christ and, and, the, and is the Holy Son of God collectively. It's also important to note that as we give, we're permanently receiving. We're constantly receiving. But what are we receiving? We're receiving whatever we're putting out there. And so if we're unhappy and we find ourselves unhappy, and we find ourselves angry, then be aware that we must be giving off something or we haven't. We've been completely neutral but there's something deep in the recesses of our subconscious mind, egoic mind, that have not been set free yet. We haven't completely let go. And so the, the trauma, the drama, the attack, whether it be in thought form or um, form in thought, you know, the physicality, people attacking us in whatever way, as I said, whether it be verbally, emotionally, psychologically or physically, then that attack becomes the manifestation which brings us into the awareness that we haven't forgiven yet. If we look upon our lives with total earnesty and honesty and, and complete transparent reflection, and we look upon all the challenges that we've had before, we will realize very quickly that it's the challenges that have brought us into awareness. Everything that has come across our path that has hurt us or we feel has harmed us in some way is what has made us seek for a happier state. And the happier state could have come in either a subjective or objective idea of true love, a partner, a companion, a, a, a state of mind, a place, an event, or even the idea of God or Christ as a savior. And why? Because regardless of what we pursued, we pursued in the, in the idea 
that if we attained, whether it be people, places, things, and events, or self-realization, or God awareness, or to know God, we would then be happy. So everything we've pursued is in the pursuit of getting to a point of happiness. And what is happiness? Happiness is one word for a condition called without suffering. So happiness equals without suffering. And so does the word peace. Peace means without suffering. And happiness doesn't necessarily mean that we're joyous and go around singing kumbaya and playing music and dancing. Happiness simply means I am free of guilt, I'm free of suffering of any form, and I am content as is in this exact moment now, present in my awareness that everything is as it's meant to be. And as I accept everything is as it's meant to be, I find peace. And that peace is the peace of God. So if there's anything we do in our lives, especially in our lives, where we're becoming more and more aware of the self, more and more aware of what is duality, therefore unreal, what is, what is real, the self, the reality that the world is simply an expression of an inner state and that the characters acting before us in what we think is the world are, are drawn to our experience because of our inner state of mind. And if we want to truly live a peaceful life, a joyous life, a life of unconditional love, then it has to start with a view that the world is a world filled with love and unconditional love. And every character in the world is at peace and is, and, and, and is the Christ and carries the face of Christ. But if we don't truly believe that, then the world will present itself, whether we've actively thought about it or not, the fact that it remains in our subconscious, unaware self, separate self, will then present itself as characters that, or people or events that attack us in some form, try and take away our joy, try and take away our inner peace, in order to bring us to a state where we have to practice practical, true forgiveness. And as we forgive, we release ourselves from bondage. We release the, the seemingly separate selves from bondage. Therefore, we release the one self from bondage. And as we release that self, we forget the illusion of separation, of suffering, of guilt, um, of pain. And as we become free of the filters called suffering, we start to remember the self, become more and more aware of the self, the self which resides in the Christ, and that's how we get to the bridge of consciousness where we get to know God. We cannot, while we're in the dream of separation, the finite mind will never get to understand and fully realize the infinite mind, God mind, and the infinite mind, that which is God, will never really can truly um, reveal itself to the finite mind. The finite mind cannot comprehend the infinite divine love, which is God. And through the experience of forgiveness, we receive that which is truth, and that which is truth comes in the form of grace and fills us into a state of higher awareness. The more we forgive, the more we forget, the more we forget, the less obstacles we have, filters we have, um, which keep us separated in our awareness. And as soon as awareness rises to a certain level, which we in this world call complete acceptance or unconditional love, God reveals himself to us. And we, as the prodigal son, as the collective sonship, awaken in our father, realizing at that very instant as we awaken that we simply had a silly mad idea where the son of God forgot not to laugh and that it never really existed in truth, but simply as an idea in that which can never be. And I think that is a pretty good explanation. Thank you.